This is a Canon C100 Mark II. It's about a 10 year old camera, it came out in 2014 um, and was roughly $5,000 whenever it was released. Nowadays you can pick these up used for $1,000 to $1,500 and I think it is an incredible camera for not just YouTube but for streaming, for live streaming large events, for documentary filmmaking, for almost anything that you can throw at it and there's quite a few reasons why. Now one of the best things in my opinion about this camera is actually its sensor and lens mount. This is a Canon EF mount with a Super 35 sensor. Now you might think that Super 35 is useless and it's dead and there's no point to it anymore and because of full frame. And that's just not true. I think Super 35 is fantastic. Um, not only that, but also the EF um, lens mount is great. Not, not because it's better than others, but because there are so many more lenses available for that sensor size and for that lens mount than probably any other lens mount. Um, Sony's definitely catching up pretty quick, but, but I think there are so many fantastic lenses that you can range from really cheap to really expensive that will fit on a camera like this. And this is one of them. This is a Sigma 18 to 35. It's a fantastic little lens. Um, it's about five to six hundred dollars and uh, it is an 18 to 35 1.8 all the way through. Um, there's a bigger version of this. It is a 50 to 100 millimeter f 1.8 all the way through. And I think these lenses on a camera like this it is practically unbeatable. I think it's an incredible combo. And again, for a lens mount and a camera like this, there are tons of lenses to choose from. You can go for sort of more expensive cinema house lenses that are all manual focus. You can get autofocus lenses, you can get bigger zoom lenses, your kind of cheap 70 to 200 lens. There's tons and tons of lenses to choose from for a camera like this. Um, and I, th I think that's a really good place to start because the more important part of your image than the camera body itself is your lenses and your lighting. Uh, and I think these are a better thing to invest into than for a more expensive camera. So again, the EF mount I think is a fantastic bonus to have on a camera like this because you can get like more expensive how, uh, cinema housed lenses, you can get cheaper zoom lenses, you can get prime lenses, um, tons and tons of lens options for a camera like this. And I think that's just a really nice um, place to be, especially when you're running and gunning a lot or doing documentary style filmmaking. You wanna make sure that you have the right lenses and realistically, if there's a certain lens you need, it will be available for this lens mount. Second, I want to talk about ergonomics. So ergonomics are one of those things, it's kind of a strange thing to talk about, but the actual feel of this camera in your hand is fantastic, especially with the lens on the front. Um, it has a really nice balance to it. The, uh, the handle on the side is fantastic, really easy to grip. It's got a start stop, scroll wheels, um, and then a joystick on the back here where you can change your settings. You also can get a top handle, which has XLR inputs, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later. Um, but the actual ergonomics and the look of this camera, I think is really nice. Um, it's not the prettiest camera in the world, but this style of camera, the Canon, Canon C100, C200, this, this look is kind of a, an iconic look. And that leads me on to the next positive thing about this camera is that they are well known. So if you're going to clients and you're doing documentary style filmmaking, you're doing testimonial stories, things like that, Coming into the camera that looks like this will bring your client comfort because they will recognize this style of camera as being kind of like a king of the of, of documentary style filmmaking and many other things like it. And, and just the aesthetic or the style of camera like this will bring comfort to your client knowing, oh, this guy's using proper gear. So the actual looks of the camera not only are nice to hold in the hands, but it also will help with your clients knowing that you're using proper gear. Third, I want to talk about the image quality and the audio quality, and I think that that's one of the strongest points to this camera. Um, even though it's got a smaller sensor, a Super 35 sensor, and it only films in 1080p, we'll come back to that, um, it's got XLR ports on the this top handle if you get that separately, um, and the image that comes out of it is fantastic. So now we're going to switch this shot over from the Sony a7C to the Canon C100 Mark II. We're going to be using the same focal length, we're using uh, the same settings, and the same microphone, which is the Samsung CO2, an incredible little microphone, um, definitely one of my top recommendations for YouTube or talking headshots. Um, currently it's running into a Zoom PodTrack P8, which is a, like a podcast style recorder, um, but for this test we're going to run it straight into the XLR ports of the camera which can provide phantom power so that you can hear the quality of the preamps built into this camera because again for a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars you're getting built-in ND filters you're getting XLR ports with phantom power with built-in preamps um, so so let's just let's just switch this over and now you're watching the Canon C100 Mark II with the Sigma 18 to 35 and the microphone going directly into the camera. And I think that this sounds and looks fantastic. I mean, I don't think there's a huge difference between this and what it looked like before. I think that the visuals of this 
shot, even though it's in 1080p compared to 4K, it's really hard to tell the difference. If you really look closely, you probably can. Um, but I think it's a fantastic camera. Now, another thing I haven't mentioned about this camera is that it actually has continuous autofocus. So if I hold things up, it's got a very reliable, snappy, um, quick autofocus system. Um, and that's actually a fantastic thing about this camera. Even though it's old, the autofocus is really, really good. It's really quick, it's smooth, it's easy. And uh, it's actually very natural. And then if you're running and gunning as a you know solo filmmaker, you're doing documentary stuff like that, um, having autofocus is incredibly handy to have. It's not perfect, um, but it's certainly better than not having it at all, like again in the Black Magics or the Z Cam stuff like that. And again, this is kind of what the footage looks like ungraded, so it's a little more flat, but it's not crazy flat. A lot of other um cameras have something, you know, super harsh um log footage styles. This one, I think, just straight out of the box, has a really nice, smooth one. And then when you add a grade to it, it's incredibly clean, incredibly easy. Um, and I think you can push the colors around to kind of do whatever you want. You can make it cold and moody, you can make it warm and cozy, you can sort of add it to be a bit more contrasty. Whatever you want to do, you can do a lot with this image before it starts to fall apart, which is a really great feature to have in a camera like this. Now, another thing that this camera has, which for the price is crazy, is actually built-in ND filters. It's actually got a little wheel here on the side where you can add up to six stops of ND, and it's a really high-quality ND filter. It's really clean. I haven't noticed a huge amount of color shift. Um, and even if there is, this the footage is so easy to grade and, and, and correct. Um, but I think it's a fantastic uh, addition to have in a camera that you can pick up for $1,000. There's very few cameras that you can get for $1,000 that have built-in ND filters. Now this camera only films in 1080p, so this is one of the cons of this camera in my opinion. It would be nice if it filmed in 4K, but honestly 1080p is not dead. Again, I think the quality looks fantastic, but not just that, the file sizes on this camera are tiny. They're super, super small. Even on a 64 gigabyte SD card, like an old SD card, not even like a new fast one, you can film for a long, long time, um, which is really handy, because again, if you're using the Blackmagic, cameras filming in ProRes or B-RAW or other cameras like that, uh, you chew through memory like there's no tomorrow. I mean, I've filmed a music video not that long ago and it was two terabytes of footage, which is a lot of footage. And then you end up needing to invest in more and more hard drives to be able to back up your footage, all that kind of stuff. So being able to film for a long time on a small SD card is actually a real plus. And even though this camera can't film in 4K, it actually does have a 4K sensor and it down samples the image to 1080p. So it's one of the best looking 1080p um, images that I've seen in a long time. And that's why I'm perfectly fine using it at 1080p. I think it slots into a 4K timeline just fine. Um, and again, if you export it in 4K, nobody's really gonna know if I'm honest with you. Um, I've used this camera to film the most popular video I've made on YouTube. It's got like 25,000 views now about the Sony ZV-10. Fantastic little camera um, and I used this camera to film that entire thing. The whole thing was filmed in 1080p and I just uploaded it in 4k uh, and everybody probably assumed that it was filmed in 4k but it wasn't. Um, so I think it's a fantastic camera even though you can't film in 4k. Now you might have a client demand or require you to film in 4k or 6k um, for the f footage and, and in that situation a camera like this won't do that. So it is a con, but it obviously does have plus sides to it as well. Smaller file sizes and really high quality 1080p. The only other downside I can think of for this camera is actually a really minor one, and that's that if you plug the camera in with DC and you plug it into the wall to be sort of powered during a live stream or a longer shoot or a wedding ceremony, whatever it might be, it doesn't charge the battery while the battery's in there. That's a really minor detail, um, but most modern cameras while the camera is plugged in, it'll be charging the battery for you at the same time, so that whenever you unplug it, the battery's charged a little bit better. This camera doesn't do that. It's a minor detail, but it's kind of one of the only other cons I could think of, um, because honestly, it is a very, very good camera. So here's the thing, I'm not actually telling you to necessarily go out and buy this camera. Even though it's a really good camera and I really enjoy using it, um, there are other options that are great. I think that this is a phenomenal camera, but there's plenty of other good options. And the main point of this video is to say that you don't need to buy a brand new camera. There are so many good cameras to choose from, um, especially older, really high quality cameras. Again, when this came out, it was $5,000 and it still holds up well today for $1,000. So the point is you don't necessarily need a brand new camera. So you, if you don't have the money for it, don't go out and spend three, $4,000 on a Sony FX3 or an A7S3 when it might be better off for you to look into older gear and buy um, used equipment that holds up really well today and you can invest your money more properly into, into the right kind of stuff for you. 
gets you better lenses, better lighting, all of that kind of stuff, which makes more of a difference to your content um, than just the camera body does. I think YouTubers do a little bit of a bad job of telling you that you need the next best newest thing, and that's just not the case. You can get by easily with a camera like this. And I know $1,000 isn't nothing, um, don't get me wrong, but compared to a lot of the cameras that I see people buying on YouTube, whenever they're pretty inexperienced with using cameras, um, $1,000 is so much better than three or $4,000. And you can use that extra money if you have it for other things. You see, gear does matter, of course it does. You want to be able to get good image quality out of your camera, but that doesn't mean that you need to spend every single penny that you have on the best, newest gear. You can save money on older gear that holds up super well and will serve your purposes just fine. So that's about all I have for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit the like button, drop a comment down below, or maybe even subscribe as we continue to build this channel. I appreciate all of you for doing so, and I hope you have a wonderful day.